This is Kimberly Quinn, host of the Minecraft podcast, and I can't tell you how much fun I have had doing this podcast. I, I started when the world closed over the pandemic in, a, in an attempt to spread some positivity out there and give people some strategies to enhance their own well-being and reduce anxiety and all of that. Now, two years later, we're still going strong and now listened to by 52 countries across the world. And I've even helped some of my students get going with their own podcasts. It's super easy to do. And I'll tell you, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. I'll just explain for you. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It is a ball. Start today. Greetings, Minecrafters, and uh, welcome to another Minecraft discussion on a nice chilly fall day. Gosh, I love sweater season. Actually, I don't really wear sweaters. That's kind of like a really ridiculous thing to say. Um, I wear ski sweaters, I guess, when skiing, but really they're more like fleece. So that's kind of a strange thing to say. So anyway, this is Kimberly Quinn, and I'm thrilled to be here on this day to have a chat with you about uh, the quality of the day and how it is such a great skill to be able to turn our day around. And those of you who have listened to you know some podcasts before and YouTube channel episodes before about how you know, I kind of interjected here and there because I'm really a fan of skills more than talents. You know, not that we would want to, you know, not have our Mozarts and Einsteins and, you know, uh, our our Olympic runners and our this and our that with the talent, you know, kind of fall from the heavens. Not saying there's tons of effort, obviously. We're not, they're not mutually exclusive. People with talent still have to work with it, right, and put in effort and grit like everybody else. Though I think we can ad- admit that not everybody can be a Michael Phelps I mean, or a Mozart. It's just how it is. So I'm a big fan of skills because I love how skills, you know, we have agency with skills, right? That's kind of a sexy 14-carat word for, you know, um, control or, or some, you know, uh, ability to exercise some self-discipline and some grit and then become better at whatever it is we're trying to get better at. So I love skills. And one of uh, my, one of my favorite skill sets um, in addition, in addition to reframing, that's probably my, one of my favorites is the ability to, to just flip the script on the day, you know, change the quality. You, you wake up, you stub your toe, you're out of tea. Or if you're a coffee drinker, you're out of coffee. I I know in this house, a couple of my, my uh, young adults would, would, uh, really start to, you know, see hairy things crawling all over them. So, I mean, I get it. No judgment. I'm like that with tea. If your day start out, you know, sort of start, starts out like on the wrong foot, it can be so easy to continue to walk on the wrong foot and, and limp around in your day, so to speak, metaphorically, as if, you know, everything's just headed in this wrong direction. So it's like dominoes. It just keeps da 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 And we often don't realize we can make a, a, a distinct choice in that moment Okay, I stubbed my co- my toe. I ran my nylons. Uh, the new pup, you know, our brand new adorable puppy got a hold of my shoe. Couldn't find this. Couldn't find that. Forgot to email this person. My boss was mad. Whatever. And it's not even eight o'clock yet. We can flip the script on that and turn the whole thing around. And so, my inspiration for this day is Sarah Bon Brednick, who wrote the book Simple Abundance. I've read this a lot in my thirties. And it's Simple Abundance, a day book of comfort and joy. And it, it has short little, there's one for every every calendar day of the whole year. They're about a page, maybe a page, page and a half. And uh, and they and they're, she's very big on the seasons and how we, you know, different things that we do, you know, that we do during the seasons. It's just really a, a good, um, a very inspirational book. And she starts out talking about the quality of the day with a quote by Henry David Thoreau, which says, to affect the quality of the day, that is the highest of arts. And again, I just love that because I think it's so easy to get sucked into, you know, the spin of the negative momentum when, you know, life just th- happened. We trip over something, break, you know, the favorite vase that, you know, 
you know, my, you know, your great grandmother gave this pass down and like, how come today? And yeah. And we just get wrapped up in that and we can turn it around. It's just a choice. It is just starting over. If it's nine 15, you can start over on nine 16 AM. That's it. And then, uh, Sarah says, we know now that there are many aspects to real life in which our opinion is either is, is neither sought nor required. Sometimes, despite our best efforts and positive thinking, health, fortune, and or peace elude us. But the one thing we do have absolute control over is the quality of our days. Amen, sister. Then she says, even when we're grief-stricken, racked with pain, sick from worry, deeply depressed, squeezed by circumstances, how we greet, meet, and complete each day is our choosing. You know, I love how Sarah put that so, you know, clearly and directly because, you know, as far as with the happiness lifestyle in general, this is our choice. And I, I hear from, from uh, you know, people ask questions, my students ask, ask questions on doing presentations that, oh, it isn't all our choice. I'm diagnosed with this. I'm diagnosed with that. Yes, it's still your choice. And it doesn't mean that we all don't have something extra to deal with, or some of us, many of us, have something extra to deal with which can be a diagnosed something like anxiety, depression, ADHD, autism, fill in the blank, whatever it is, uh, or it can be an extra something to deal with that's circumstantial. Maybe somebody just, just lost a cherished loved one and, you know, it's month two and they're still not over it yet and it's affecting things. Okay. And the, and the thing is we, ha- we all have some extra things to deal with and we have to go at our own pace and, and with, what we're able to do, given our circumstances, given our wiring, we can only do the best we can. So that's why it's great to set the bar, do the best we can, because that's when we can always reach, right? So those extra somethings to deal with are like wearing an invisible weight belt, walking around. Sometimes I say in a track meet, and everybody else is running the same race, and they can't see that you're, you know, you're wearing a 10, 15, 20 pound weight belt underneath it all that that is maybe, you know, bipolar or you know, depression or what, you know, whatever it is, the, the, the plain and simple fact is even with that invisible weight belt, we're all still in the same race. The gun goes off, we run and it's easier for some than others. And that is a drag, but that's, you know, that's just how it is. So the way uh, Sarah is saying this with our day in a lighter, you know, more, you know, um, you know, a lighter context in a daily context is it is our choice Within, within the circumstances, that's a context, because obviously curveballs can happen throughout the day. It's our choice how that day unfold, you know, it unfolds, and it's our choice how we navigate it. The day unfolds kind of how it's meant to unfold, and it's how we ride the wave, you know, that, that makes or breaks, you know, the kind of the level of, of um, goodness that we're feeling in that day. And then Sarah says, we hate to hear this. Of course, when we're sick, worried, grieving, depressed, or frantic, we're not very interested in the day's quality. We just want the misery to end. But wishing the day away is also a creative choice, even if it's not a deliberate one. This is very important because we walk around making active choices and passive choices all day long. And obviously, it's better to be more pleasant, to be a key player, an active player, in our own lives. And it is to be passive. It's kind of like the driver's seat versus the passenger side or the back seat. If you're super passive, the trunk, then you're not exercising, you know, you're not really injecting much, much, you know, of your own desire into anything if you're passive. And so the thing is we can either, you know, again, be active or be passive. And it doesn't generally work out well when we are, are passively just letting it all happen without, you know, being mindful and engaged in our lives, no matter what's going on in that day, when we're mindful and engaged, that's when we can really kind of navigate through with our resiliency skills, you know, and, and then Sarah continues. She said, uh, I like how she calls, says this or phrases this in this way, artists of the everyday. Don't you love that? Artists of the everyday excel in elevating the simple to the level of the sacred. You can use whatever you have on hand, a meal, a conversation, humor, affection to create, I love the word, to create comfort and contentment, to put a positive spin, if not an overall quality of the day, then on critical moments of it. That's fabulous. 
she says, uh, for some time now, I've been conducting a top secret experiment um, with, with life, as Thoreau suggests we do. I wanted to see just how much influence I really had on the day's character. So the first words I speak in the morning are, oh, I love this one, quote, thank you for the gift of this wonderful day, end quote. You know, and, and then Sarah continues. She said, uh, I like how she calls, says this or phrases this in this way. Artists of the everyday, don't you love that? Artists of the everyday excel in elevating the simple to the level of the sacred. You can use whatever you have on hand, a meal, a conversation, humor, affection, to create, I love the word, to create comfort and contentment, to put a positive spin, if not an overall quality of the day, than on critical moments of it. That's fabulous. She says, uh, for some time now, I've been conducting a top secret experiment um, with, with life, as the rose suggests we do. I wanted to see just how much influence I really had on the day's character. So the first words I speak in the morning are, oh, I love this one, quote, thank you for the gift of this wonderful day, end quote. And I think uh, those of you who, who, you know, have heard other episodes where I'm talking about things related to gratitude. I start every single day of my life. When I wake up, I take that minute to kind of look out the bay window. Maybe it's even 30 seconds. Some sometimes I say, thank you kind of out that bay window. And I, I don't say all the rest of this. I'm just say th saying, thank you that I swing around when I, my feet at the floor, I say, thank you. And that's for my my feet working, my legs working, my spine is intact, my arms work, my eyesight is great. Well, I have glasses, but I can see, and that's the main thing. And, and overall, really good health. And I don't say any of those words. I just say thank you, and I'm thinking it, though. I'm feeling it. Thank you, thank you, done. The fact of the matter is we can prime our day but as we as we are laying there, when we swing around and get out of bed with, with the simple words, thank you. We just cannot go wrong with the words thank you when we start our day. And I think uh, those of you who, who, you know, have heard other episodes where I'm talking about things related to gratitude, I start every single day of my life. When I wake up, I take that minute to kind of look out the bay window. Maybe it's even 30 seconds sometimes. I say thank you kind of out that bay window. And I, I don't say all the rest of this. I'm just say th saying thank you. That I swing around when I my feet at the floor, I say thank you. And that's for my my feet working, my legs working, my spine is intact, my arms work, my eyesight is great. Well, I have glasses, but I can see, and that's the main thing. And, and overall, really good health. And I don't say any of those words. I just say thank you, and I'm thinking it, though. I'm feeling it. Thank you, thank you, done. The fact of the matter is we can prime our day but as we as we are laying there, when we swing around and get out of bed with, with the simple words, thank you. We just cannot go wrong with the words thank you when we start our day. And so Sarah says, here are the initial findings, but you will not like them, nor did I. The first one, she says, all days are wonderful in direct proportion to the creative energy invested in them. No investment, no return. I love that one. I also love that she put it first on her list. I think of it as two things, no investment, no return, obviously money, right? If we think of our life minutes, if we spend our life minutes like they're cash, however, you know, well, we invest our life minutes in our day, being mindful and engaged and active, active team players, right? Being in our own lives, then, you know, we, we, we get back what we put in. I also think of it of, the gym, it doesn't have to be the gym, athletics, running, walking, anything active, because, you know, our bodies and our level of physical health and fitness, we're talking, I mean, physical health in relation to being, being in shape, not necessarily, you know, anything disease oriented, although that's also true in many circumstances. I'm thinking of basic, you know, sports habits, like running and walking and lifting weights and things like that. No investment, no return. We don't lift weights. We're not going to have you know, sleek arms and legs, unless we're doing something else that's, that's relatable, like mountain climbing or whatever you fill in the blank with how, whatever you're doing, but if no pain, no gain, right? We don't put in the effort. We're not going to be physically fit. It's just how it is. And her second one says, even lousy days possess hidden wonder. Sometimes all you need is a moment of, of attitude adjustment to shift your perception of an entire afternoon and move forward into a pleasant evening. Now, attitude adjustment, again, this comes down to choice. 
Sometimes people get so wrapped up in the he said, she said, they said, rah, rah, rah. even if it's legit, somebody wronged you, somebody was snarky, somebody was just plain pissy, you know, and they were in a bad place and they said something unkind or maybe even flat out cruel. We can reside there and focus on the conflict or we can shift out of it, completely dismiss it, completely dismiss it, sort of make a conscious choice not to allow, because the word is allow, any more of our life minutes to be spent in this way you know, you know, sticking like super glue to whatever that person's snark was about. We can make a conscious choice to leave the room, which will make it easier, leave the house, which may, might make it even easier and, and easier and easier and easier, and shift out of that negative momentum. Even if, even if it was totally legit, you're standing there not even speaking, and the person says something. We can still shift out of it and turn the day around. Then uh, the third one on Sarah's list, she says that weather does not seem to affect the experiment. Gray, cold, and rainy days spent in an office are just as susceptible to the warming influence of enthusiasm as our sunny days spent lying in a hammock sipping sangria. This also has me thinking of Sean Aker and his book, The Happiness Advantage, which, as you know, I, uh, um, I bring it up a lot. I use him in the course Mindcraft that I teach, also designed, actually. Um, just had a blast doing it, I'll tell you that. Because Sean Aker, his research found too that, and I forget the percentage, but it's uh, it's 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 very telling that when uh, the person's in a condition, the conditions in a person's life, as far as affecting their happiness level, I believe are only about ten percent. Don't quote me exactly, but it's very close to that. It's a minority, minority, minority. The other ninety-ish or eighty-ish or whatever it is, I think it's not. I think it was ten percent. So let's say ninety is the rest of everything else we do in shifting our mindset and controlling negative thinking and all these other things, everything else we need to do to, to stay in a positive mindset. Obviously we're talking about human animals and non-human animals. We cannot, you know, um, we cannot just leave genetics out of it because obviously there's some genetics involved in everything. But the point is that our life circumstances are very much a minority as far as our level of happiness, which means we have a way more control than we think we do often. And then she says, days that are expected to be wonderful before they begin turn out to be so much more. Be ter- Sorry, let's say that over again. Days that are expected to be wonderful before they begin turn out so more frequently than days greeted with grumbling. Why would anybody on purpose, intentionally want to greet their day with grumbling. I don't know. We're not talking about legit hurtful stuff happening, right? And, and that said, because that, you know, to to feel is to heal. We've got to process when, when life's curveballs happen, right? Though on a daily basis, I've heard it so many times. Sometimes, oh, I'll say, oh, what you got going today? And, and, and somebody might say, oh, I got this, I got that meat. Oh, it's going to be a horrible day. I'm thinking, oh my God. It's only 9.02 and you've decided it's going to be a horrible day. Holy Toledo. There's like hours and hours and hours left. You could get a great phone call that, you know, you won something or some your best friends come in to visit. Like, who knows? It's 9.02 and you've decided it's going to be a miserable day. Well, I would say that if you've decided that at 9.02, more than likely, you'll be right. And then uh, Sarah winds up, she says, the results of this experiment suggest that it doesn't matter whether a day is good or bad. What matters is what we do with it. We knew that. Awesome. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful northern Vermont on this crispy, cool fall day. I'm ready to go out for a walk. Have a mindful day. Mm -hmm.